much to break down so much spidery like spidery goodness uh i love the fact that we got jay jonah in uh santa claus suit darren DePaul is a brilliant brilliant human being uh, but at this point like we have gotten to see some major parts of new york city um and some major destruction and a lot of easter eggs like should folks just be paying attention like every, like the insomniac symbol and like the mall, like should folks be paying attention throughout 100%. this game? You, you, you don't want to uh, sleep on, on the secret, they're everywhere. And the team brings those together, like that insomniac sign, that was just one of our environment artists saying, what if you had an insomniac sign? And then I think James, you animated that, right? Hey, I just I, I stole the sign from somewhere and just stuck it in there. It's like, hey, let's just go with this, and hopefully we can keep this in. So, <laughs> and luckily the insomniac sign fake. I love it. Also, I feel like you know, 
the teamwork here, the assist that we get, like it's so well crafted to spotlight Miles's powers. Um, what should folks be looking out for as they're learning how to maneuver and like really do the gameplay in this game? Like I like it seems like it is really accessible, but also there's so many little intimate details to it. Yeah, I, I think the thing that's amazing about the system is is it's got accessibility, but then it's hard to master. We're about to see a scene here that's super important to his art. Pete! Pete! Pete, wake up. Wake up, wake up, man. Wake up, man. This Spider-Man is broken. I would like to exchange for new one. Ah. This one will do. Miles, get out of here! Bro. Jack? The hell? <laughs> You just saw Miles get his bioelectricity power for the first time to help save Peter Parker. They can't. No one can see me. I'm. I'm losing it. It's. It looks so amazing. Um, what? Like. Clearly, this is one of Miles's core powers. It. It. It is. It's so essential into making him different. Um, what were the what was the thought process on having him discover it at this moment um, instead of even just knowing? Well, we wanted to make sure there was an emotional moment tied to each of these powers manifesting. If you think about it, as in a coming of age story, the key moments influence your life. Saving his mentor was essential, and that's why that power came to save. Him. And for you, James, like. There's so much amazing detail that's happening right now in this battle. You know, were there any particular challenges that you knew you just had to get, you had to get them right, um, oh, particularly with Rhino? Absolutely. I mean, Rhino's just a big guy to try to animate, and luckily we have some amazing animators here that did an amazing job bringing him to life and adding new moves to the arsenal, like this, like this here. Where Miles has to dodge over, figuring out what are the, the mechanics going to do for them. And this move. Well. You know, man, chasing you through the city kind of felt like a wild, uh, what's the word? Wild goose chase. The wild goose? No. No! I hate Jason's food! You alive? Kinda. Guys, wow, just, <laughs> wow. Simon Krieger, head of R&D at Roxxon Energy. Pleasure to meet you. You too. Uh, sorry, I think our ball landed in your yard. No, you actually did us a favor. We uh, just bought the place. Uh, we're planning to tear it down for a build. But uh, looks like you beat us to it. I wanted to thank you, both of you. Taken down Rhino? Solo? You are going places, bud. 
Thanks. But he, he's still dangerous. Nah, we'll hold him for the police. You know, I always think these super troopers are overkill until something like this happens. Oh, duty calls. Hey, uh, really great to meet you both. <laughs> Future's looking bright. Hello. Hey. He's right. Yeah. Let's clear out. Let the police do their job. Just... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, the real Demon Souls begins. Attacking, blocking, and dodging all use stamina, so the player must always consider where they are, what they're facing, and what their foes are capable of. Now, these dragglings aren't particularly daunting, their patterns are relatively simple, and their attack ability somewhat limited. Still, even these earliest enemies can pose a threat if the player loses focus. For those who played Demon Souls on PlayStation 3, you'll notice enemies behave exactly as you remember. Though you can play at 60 frames a second in performance mode, and animations have been completely redone, combat timing is just as it was. We're actually using original code for these core gameplay pillars, the untouched essence of the game around which everything else has been beautifully remade. It's a modern engine driving this white knuckle combat experience where the slightest error could mean your death. We're playing in performance mode, which targets 60 frames a second, running at a beautiful dynamic 4K. There's also a cinematic option, that's an even more vivid native 4K, targeting 30 frames a second. Whether your preference is fluidity and responsiveness, or simply the most detailed possible experience, the game is a feast for the senses on PlayStation 5. We've added thousands upon thousands of new sound effects to take advantage of the PlayStation 5's impressive Tempest 3D audio. Now you can hear Imperial spies in the Palace of Boletaria creeping up behind you, or a creature slithering out of the slime in the Valley of Defarment, far below. Now you can experience this stunning world in 3D audio just by connecting a headset. We're also really excited about the DualSense wireless controller's haptic feedback. We wanted to make combat feel grittier and darker, so this is the perfect way to feel steel clash against steel, or the crackle of a fireball in the palm of your hand before you cast it at your enemies. We've left the open air of Boletaria and descended into the lair of the Flame Lurker, deep within Stonefang Mines. Flame Lurker is one of the most beloved of all of the Demon Souls bosses, and here he's brought to life in amazing detail. The real-time lighting and incredible particle effects, as well as a deadly redesigned arena, all culminate in a spectacular battle set in a world of fire. And the music here as you battle Flame Lurker is one of many incredible tracks created for Demon Souls. On PlayStation 5, we've rearranged and fully reorchestrated Shinsuke Kida's breathtaking score with 120 world-class musicians performing at the legendary Air Studios in London. Tower of Latria. 
This is the first part of the third archstone. It's truly one of the most unforgettable areas in Demon's Souls. It's so haunting and claustrophobic. It's rife with detail and countless nooks and crannies. On PlayStation 5, we've radically increased the object density. The stage is absolutely littered with rubble, broken vases and abandoned clutter. It's an amazing set piece for enemy encounters. These mine flayers, for example, cast glowing projectiles down long corridors. For all of the added or enhanced effects like these, we've endeavoured to strike a balance between dread and beauty, echoing the tragic fall of the once glorious but now doomed Kingdom of Boletaria. Moving on to the rain-soaked Shrine of Storms. Each class in Demon Souls has a radically different feel. Knights in their armor are tough, but a bit clumsy when dodging an attack. The thief, on the other hand, is quick and sure of foot, but requires finesse to inflict a killing blow. Veterans might have noticed that we've added new animations for all weapon types. Of course, we made sure to match the timing and feel of the original attacks. It's a small change, but it helps make each weapon choice feel a little bit more unique and makes the thrill of landing a perfect backstab all the more satisfying. Anyone who played Demon Souls on PlayStation 3 knows that the Valley of Defilement is one of the most challenging, demanding levels in the game. We're so excited for those players to revisit this gloomy, arresting swamp, now with performance mode at a targeted 60 frames per second. This area was a particular challenge because we wanted to preserve the occasionally disorientating, almost maze-like nature of the stage while building on the mythos of Boletaria. After all, this is a place of outcasts and the unwanted. We wanted the valley to feel much more alive with the PlayStation 5 remake, and it gave us a rare chance to revisit a truly iconic level in gaming history. And before we wrap up, here's a first look at the Dirty Colossus, a nightmarish mishmash of detritus that's been discarded from above. Your best bet for success here is to keep your distance and time your attacks carefully, and use a weapon that can burn through this toxic monstrosity. Here in one of the arenas, Bruce is playing as one of the returning mechs, which is Watchbot, and I'm playing as another returning mech, Satesh. And uh, we just want to show you guys some of the basics of gameplay here. So, Bruce, let's talk through uh, some of the basics attacks. 
So if I go ahead, I can do a light punch, I can do a heavy punch, I can do a light kick, I can do a heavy kick. So this is quite a bit different from the first game where you had the individual limb control uh, with each of the various inputs. This is more based off of the, you know, the light attacks and the heavy attacks. Yeah, definitely. So, so a big, a big difference here is that you're attacking with your full body. So if I punch, my lower body moves, my whole body moves, and I'm committed to that attack. All right. Well, let's talk a, a little bit about mobility then. Yeah, definitely. So we have a dash. Dash is super useful to avoid attacks, and it's also useful to get away to get around the map. We also have a jump, and we have a double jump. And what's really kind of cool about this is these mobility options can combine with basic attacks. So I can do a jumping kick. I can do a jumping punch. All right. And then... Obviously, no fighting game would be complete without uh, defensive abilities, ways to, to counter your opponents. So we're able to uh, we're able to block with this shield, and this is not an infinite shield. So the more Bruce attacks me, the more damage it takes, and then if it fully breaks, it'll stun me for a moment, and then uh, so you're not able to block infinitely. But there's also a way for your character to break that block and that is through uh the grab which bruce just did there so if i'm blocking he can grab it ignores my block and he he throws me across the map so with the new controls and the the new fluidity to gameplay another big thing in this is the ability to combo move so why don't you show us a few of the cool combos that you can do with watchbot yeah, definitely. So you can combine together your basic attacks to create a combo. And this is kind of showcasing the uh, another big difference you'll see from people who are played Override One, and that's the faster combat, the the more uh, the more fluid combat. What was kind of the uh, what was the thought process in making that change? So we wanted to preserve a lot of what made the original override great, while also learning from the community feedback to improve it in very specific ways. So, you know, we had a lot of feedback from the first game uh, that, that, that led us to speeding up a lot of the attacks. Uh, but it was also important for us to keep a lot of the accessibility of the original game, to keep the sort of focus on having a few a few basic moves that you can combine together, the ease of execution. This was something that was huge in the first game, and we've tried our best to kind of keep true to that. So let's see some of those unique abilities that Watchbot has. Yeah, definitely. So every character in the game has four special attacks. So Watchbot has a range plasma cannon attack. He has a rising punch special attack. An EMP burst that stuns the opponent. And a slashing sword charge attack. And the controls for these unique abilities uh, will translate to the different characters that you're playing as as well so i'm playing as satesh so i also have uh four unique abilities that are mapped to those same controls as watchbots are so even if i'm switching through characters i know that i can easily pick this character up and while their abilities are different uh the the control still makes sense to me so for instance uh satesh has this grab attack he has this range dash attack that's really good to use in corners. He has a ground pound. And one of the unique things about this is if you hit your opponent with that ground pound, it will, it, you can fire it a second time. So, uh, and then he also has 
where he punches, and so this does damage from from range as well. Punches the ground and causes a shockwave to to move across, and that's all done with the same controller input uh, control input that Bruce was using for Watchbot special abilities as well. Yeah, that's one of the things that's really really awesome about Override too, is that you can execute all of these special moves just by combining together the basic inputs. You don't have to memorize uh, really complicated combo sequences. And each each mech also has an ultimate ability. So you'll see as you're playing through the map the matches that there are these yellow circles that uh, will pop up. And if you stand in those, it'll give you ult charge. So up in the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see my health bar and also the ultimate charge bar. So the more damage I take, the less ultimate charge that I need. And once it's charged up, I can fire off my ultimate ability like so and deal a, a ton of damage with that. And that's a unique across each character as well. So why don't we uh, just put this all together and show people uh, what an actual fight looks like. Yeah, one of the great things about overrides gameplay is just the accessibility in it it's got very deep combat and there's a lot of cool things that you can do as you learn the different abilities that your characters have but there's also a real kind of pick up and play ability to it as well where even people who don't have a ton of experience in fighting games like myself can pick up a controller and feel like you can do a lot of cool things with the the mech that you're playing as And this is one of how many arenas are going to be in the final game, Bruce? There's going to be eight unique arenas in the final game. So right now we're playing in desert. Yes, um, yeah, we're playing in desert. Which is a really good one for something like this where we're just trying to show off the gameplay. But uh, as you'll see in the next match that we're going to play, there's a lot of really cool, unique personality to the arenas as well. Yeah, definitely. Every every arena has their own unique obstacles and environmental objects. And the environmental objects are really cool because they help you. They both help and hinder you as you're playing the match and can kind of give you a competitive advantage. So you'll see as we're playing through some of these that you're able to throw objects in the environment and use them to sort of block block enemy attacks. You can see as we're playing through this that that a lot of the objects in the environment are destructible, and and you can pick up and throw a lot of the objects in the environment at your enemy. And in true fashion, they explode on impacts. Yeah, definitely. You also see that as we're playing the map, weapons spawn. So you can go ahead and grab those weapons and use them to beat on your enemy. So Sprinkles is a, a new bot, and she's got a lot of cool abilities. She has the ability to fire hard candies. Um, she can oh, she can fire out a giant bubblegum ball, uh, bubblegum bubble, I guess, uh, that will lock your opponent up and uh, send them floating away. And you can, uh, well, when they're not bouncing around all the trampolines on Casino, you can attack them while they're in the air. <laughs> yeah, it's a good ability. <laughs> and uh, she's got this ability to throw out hard candies that will stun. And then she also has a dash attack. Yes, yeah, so with Vintage, we have... We have a charge tantrum attack. And we have a AoE stun called Thunder. We have a blaster. 
and we have his signature ability to save and you know restore from the restore the save, basically teleport. One of the real cool things about this teleport ability is that if if Luke happens to sort of be standing on top of it when I teleport, it'll frag him a bit and it'll take damage. Could be soaked to the skin in the mouth soon I know she got the good 